Hello, hello, welcome back to another video. My name is Gemma and today I'm very excited because I'm going to be reviewing the first book in my list of 40 books to read before 40. So if you missed the video on that, I asked 40 booktubers to recommend me one book that they think that I should read before 40, which is happening in exactly three years because as I'm filming this, uh, it is my 37th birthday. Da, da, da. So I have three years to read these 40 books. Uh, why do I need three years to read 40 books when I read 150 books a year? That is because I have no self-control. <laughs> and I am a magpie that likes to pick up all the pretty things that happen to cross my path uh, as I meander through booktube. So I've given myself a decent, uh, a decent run up and I am going to review each of the 40 as I read them and rank them as I go. So the first book, the first book that I picked up from this list was Babel by RF Kwong, which was recommended to me by Danny at Danny's Book World. She's currently not posting, uh, but she is an absolute diamond of a human. And uh, yeah, I was, I was excited to have this book on the list. Pretty much everyone has given it rave reviews. Dark Academia, fantasy, yes, 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 tick, tick, tick. However, I'm gonna go against the grain because I didn't like it. So <laughs> let's get into the synopsis of the book first. So we are following a young boy, Robin. He uh, is a young Chinese boy. And when he is a child, his family dies and he is taken to England by a patron um, who is also a professor at the University of Oxford. This takes place in the early 1800s. And he is sort of groomed and prepared for this life in the language department at Oxford. And when he gets there, he, he becomes part of a group of other young people who have been brought from other countries other countries colonised by Britain to work within this sort of translation department in the Tower of Babel at Oxford. So that's sort of the, the setup to the story. There is a fantasy element in this in that Babel, one of its key jobs is to produce these silver bars that are used for pretty much anything. Sewage, growing lovely gardens, um, transport, safety, like all sorts of things uh, these bars are used for. And they are sort of created within the translation department, but within the language department at Babel because to sort of activate these silver bars, they have to be inscribed with translated match pairs, which are sort of two words that mean the same thing in two different languages. That is a like a gross underestimation of sort of like the, the background to the magic system. Uh, but in a nutshell, <laughs> for the purposes of, of this video, that's enough detail. So the themes in this, again, should have been Gemma Catnip. It's talking about colonialism, the impacts of colonialism, the impacts of war, trade, um, resource hogging of rich nations, the discrimination of um, minority cultures and races, particularly within Britain, uh, slave labour. It's just, there's so many topics here that I gravitate towards as a reader. So why didn't it work for me? <laughs> so I'm gonna be honest, I found it somewhat dull. It was, it, I, I feel like it was really overwritten. It did not need to be over 500 pages. Um, one of the things in particular that annoyed me is there are footnotes in this. Um, and it just adds bits of useless information as you go through, but it pulls you out of the story every time there's a footnote. And there are a lot of footnotes. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed Robin's character and Robin's character arc. I thought he was great, morally grey, uh, sort of, you see him turn from like quite a naive person into someone with 
a lot more worldly understanding and opinions and views of his own and I quite liked that. I didn't feel like the side characters, his friends, were as well fleshed out. Some of them, yes. Uh, some of them, not so much. And it just, I never really felt a connection with them. Uh, I also felt like the antagonists of this story were too dimensional. Uh, so they were just bad. They didn't have any real redeeming qualities. Um, and I just felt like no one's completely good or completely bad, right? And I just, I, I, I just felt there needed to be a little bit more sort of ambiguity around the antagonists of the story. Uh, sort of flip-flopping between dislikes and likes. One of the things that, that RF Kong did really, really well was create Babel. The mental image of this huge tower in Oxford uh, was fantastic. She also had a section of the book that was set in Canton in China and that was really vividly drawn as well. I really enjoyed that. But I just never really connected with the characters. Even Robin, the main character, though when I look at it subjectively he had a good character arc and he had interesting features about his personality. I just never really cared about him. I never really got into like the meat of him I, I don't really know why that was because he was the sort of character that I would usually root for so I don't really understand why I, I didn't get on with him but it was one of those books you know when you're just like you're not really fussed about picking it up and that was how I felt about it and I had to pick it up a lot of times because it's a long book <laughs> so yeah, it just really didn't work for me and I feel like I'm the only person that has that opinion. So if anyone else didn't get on with Babel, then please let me know. And this came as a surprise to me, not only because like on the on the packet, this is a Gemma book, but I have read The Poppy War by R.F. Kong and really loved it. I think I gave it five stars. So I have enjoyed her stuff in the past and then this one just didn't work for me. I think that people who like this will also really love um, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell by Susanna Clarke or vice versa if you've read that I think you will like this. Uh, it has really similar tones and I do think it's it's just a writing tone in this that I don't know maybe it kept I think there was a level of distance in the writing style it kept the reader at a bit of a bit of a distance it was quite um rigid and I don't know there wasn't a lot of emotion in the writing that sort of started to transition out at the end and I feel like it was probably a creative choice to do it like that but it just meant that I never really connected with anyone so when all the shit started hitting the fan at the end of the book I kind of didn't care because I was really disengaged um, by this sort of like standoffish writing style and yeah unfortunately I gave it two and a half stars and I feel like I'm probably gonna get kicked off booktube for having that opinion uh, but yeah no it didn't work for me however on the plus side for Danny uh, it's the first of the 40 I've read so it currently ranks in the number one position so there we go uh, I'd love to know your thoughts feelings and uh, if you missed the initial video where I talked about the 40 books. I will leave that here for you and I will see you all very soon with another one. Bye guys! <laughs>